Bible to read from again make us believe that Jesus could be coming any day now? Because I did refer to that. The Bible among these and doesn't give one tells us a number of things to look for in the last days. And uh, one of them that I was just reviewing is the first teaching, which is in the collection of, of, of Imam Muslim, and it's the second teaching in the collection of over 5,000, no, wait a minute, hold on, 3,000, 3,000 hadiths which are mentioned in Sayyid Bukhara. So there, this is right up front, it's like almost the number one thing. And that is talking about when the angel Gabriel came to Muhammad, peace be upon him, and I'll give you the end of the story, it's rather long. And he asked him, he said, the angel is asking Muhammad in front of the people to get the answer out of him. Because the angel doesn't need to ask him anything. But he's asking so that people will hear this information. And he asked him, when is going to be the hour? It means when's the last day? And the prophet gave me upon him, he said, the one being asked doesn't know any more than the one asking. I don't know and you don't know. But the signs are these. And he mentioned two of the signs in that particular teaching. There are many others, but I'll mention these two. One is that the slave will give birth to her own master. And the other one is that when we see the barefoot, destitute, uh, or poor uh, goat herders of the desert, even the Arabs, competing with each other to build magnificent edifices in the desert, Okay, I'll come back to that. I'm going to go back to the lady giving birth to her own master. And we're not allowed as Muslims to say that this actually means this or that means that. We can say you could look at it and think to yourself what it means. Because we're not supposed to try to predict anything. Not even what the rain is going to be tomorrow, or snow or anything else. It's, these are things known to God and you say God knows, but it could be this. But have you noticed and I have because at my age, I'm 61 years old this month, alhamdulillah. And I have a good memory of what, what it was like when I was a child. It was great. This was a great, wonderful country. You have no idea what it was like. We used to leave our keys in the car so that people could move it. So we didn't worry about parking fines. We didn't have that. People didn't move their car. They needed to go where they were. And if they wanted to clean the street like today in New York, they'll throw your car. No, they didn't just move your car to the side and do whatever they need to do. And nobody would steal your car. That would be unthinkable to steal somebody's car. And leave your house open, because while you're away, maybe somebody needed to go inside. Maybe it would rain or something. Mother used to make up food and put it on the back window to sell, and people could come by and take it, because they were poor people, didn't have any food. They could just take it. Or they could knock on the door and say, we're hungry. And it, it was common. It was very, very common that you would give food. And anybody wants a ride, they could just pick up their thumb and you would start give them a ride, take them someplace. And even then, put this out of your way, you would just do that. That was common. That was the decent thing to do. People were very religious. And I mean that not in the sense that they went around their Bible trying to convert people, but they actually acted like what the teaching of religion is about. People were kind, courteous, and we were taught real early. If you can't say something nice, don't say anything wrong. And this is the teaching of Islam. Man kana yibnu min zala wa yam al akhir yaqulu khayr aw yasmi. But the one who believes in Allah on the last day, either stay good or shut up. That's Texas translation. But it was a great, wonderful part. It was very strange if anybody cheated somebody. There were cheaters out there, but they were strange. And we used to talk about them like, you know, wow, that's a bad person. And if somebody went to jail, it was like the end of the world. You, you, you just forget it. Somebody had a, a criminal record. And if a girl had an affair with a boy, that was it. And forget that person. She's, she's history. This is terrible. And people would say, the Bible says, what do you do with God? That's one of the commandments. You can't do that. You go to hell. And today they go, ha, 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 they go against you. How many girlfriends do you have? And even today, you know, how many girlfriends and girlfriends do you have? In San Francisco, I don't know. Just, I mean, you know, you see what's on TV, right? And I want to come to the point about 
about this grave given to the master. No child that I knew, and I knew some kids, you know, pretty mouthy to each other, but I never saw a child talk back to a parent. Never. Even as I grew older and I saw a child speak back to a teacher one time, the whole room went, <gasps> I'm really waiting for lightning to strike the place because the child spoke back to the teacher. It wasn't long before lightning struck his pants because he got it. And they used to do that in class. You know, they had the teachers had a paddle and it was different sizes depending on the teacher and what, how big the happy one just hit you over the desk and whack away, you know. <laughs> then all of a sudden they said you can't do that to kids anymore. But the Bible said, spare the rod. And spoil the child. The Bible's right. Whenever there's no corporal punishment or there is no uh, enforcement behind what you say, what are you going to do? Talk the kid to death. And the people try to do that. You know? Well, you shouldn't do that. Don't do that. Oh, you don't really want to do that, do you? Please don't break that. Oh, darn. <laughs> But there's an extreme too, the other way, you know, and, that, and I guess the problem is that people don't realize how Islam provides something nice. Islam, in concept, is too simple. It talks about rights. Everybody today talks about rights, but they forget about the other side of it, because Islam gives you both rights and limitations. Because there's some limits. If I give you the right to do whatever you want to do, I'm going to have to draw a line somewhere, right? Because I have to give him the same right. I can do that all that you want to do, but really he needs his rights too. So if he said, well, I just want to go like this, then he gets it done. Okay. So, look, you can't go into his face. Is that right? So it's fair. But people forget to mention that side of it. So what happens when you take these limits away and allow people to go beyond what they're supposed to do, then you get an imbalance in your society. And today, and I'm not talking about today, today, I'm talking about 20 years ago, actually, I saw it with my own eyes. A woman who had two boys, no husband, and she's trying to provide for them. She's working at her job full time. She came home, and she had a box of tennis shoes, because it was first school. And the 12-year-old boy opens up the tennis shoes, and starts cursing at his mother, telling her something like, you got me Nikes, I told you I did this, or uh, vice versa, I think he went the Nikes, I can't remember. But I was shocked at the way he treated his mother and told her to put herself back in her car, go back to the place and trade off with other kind of shoe, and then never do it again. Because she got him on sale, she was trying to save some money, and he was just basically telling her, I'm not going to school like that. And she did it. She got the car and went back, got the other shoes and brought them back. <coughs> and apologized to him. What do you call that? Does that sound like a slave giving birth to their own master? I don't know. Because it sure doesn't sound good, does it? This mom teaches that if children do this to their parents, then all of their worship became canceled. You can fast until you drop dead. And you can stand and pray till you fall over, but Allah is not going to accept any of it. Because the first and foremost thing, after your correct belief, is going to be your relationship with other people. You can go back and see if you know what it said in the Bible, and the second commandment, to love your brother as yourself. And it's when it teaches us that you have to prefer for your brother what you want for yourself. And when it says brother here, it's not talking about a male is talking about other human beings. And the first human being in his clown is your mother. Because the proper peace be upon him was asked. After my duty to Almighty God and the commandments that come from the prophet, meaning the prophet Muhammad, he said, Who is first to have rights on me? He said, Your mother. He said, And then who? He said, Your mother. He said, And then who? He said, Your mother. And then your father. This is a very famous hadith, especially amongst the women in this life. Am I right or wrong? Any Muslims know that one? Yeah. yeah. Is it true? Yeah. And is that the way Muslims are supposed to? After we're supposed to give this high 
respected one. And when our parents become old as Muslims, we have to care for them. We can't put them in a notebook somewhere. We can't do that. That it is not acceptable. Even if they become totally infirm, my own father got Alzheimer's disease to the extent that he couldn't do anything for himself and he had almost no mind at all. And the people that would come to the house, that, uh, you know, because the state sends somebody out every so many days and they don't charge us for that. And we appreciate it. But we liked it because they didn't come out and tell us tips and things that care for them. But they would think, why don't you just put them in, in put them away? You bet, you can't help it. And he's taking up all your time, he's taking up your resources, and he you knows the state will pay for it. Just let it go, he said, we can't. He said, well, he doesn't even know. We said, I don't know. I know. And somebody here is with him 24-7, that loves him. We care about him. We're going to make sure that he breathes, that he turns over, that he eats, or goes to the bathroom and eats his food. He died right there with my daughter, right there beside him. And she heard his last breath. So there's no way that we have to have a second thought about if I would have been there, this, or if I could have done so and so, or, you know, this, this is how it should be. So when you see the children treating their parents like, like this is the slave for me, telling the parent what to do, just remember that. Now the second part of it. I just got back from Saudi Arabia, by the way, last week. You can't believe the number of buildings and the beauty, the majesty of some of these buildings. The architecture is out of this world. And the height of these buildings would, would scare you. In a desert, I'm from Texas, where land used to be pretty cheap, okay? So we have what we call ranch style houses. You build up. You never build up. Why? Because it costs more money to build up. The only time you go up is when real estate's expensive, right? Deserts means land is cheap, right? Yeah. So why are these guys building 30 story buildings, 40 story buildings, 60 story buildings, 100 story buildings in the desert? And I asked them a couple years ago when I was over there, I asked, uh, this huge building is going up for a quarter across from another huge building. I said, why are you doing it? He said, well, it's an office building. I said, but there's an office building right across the street at 15. Nobody even wants to use it. Why are you doing it? He said, so we taller. And they called after their family, like this man after my dad, and I wanted to be higher than his name after his dad. But that's not all. It says about them being magnificent. I did live in one house, and they told us, you know, when you get ready to to pray, we always wash up, and they have a, a little room right off the main area so that you can go in and wash up to do that. We went in there, and there was, it had a, you know what an island kitchen is, right? Well, this has an island sink that are around in a circle, that island, right? And they were beautiful. It was so ornate, you wouldn't want to turn the water on and mess it up. But it was so good, that it had flowers and stuff coming out of there, and this real ornate thing. And I looked at it and I said, that doesn't look like brass. He said, that looks like gold. I said, it is gold. Gold sinks. Now, I didn't use the rest of them, but I heard one of the others come out and he said, the toilet was made out of gold. <laughs> I don't want to say anything there. The joke's already there, right? <laughs> that joke's there. Hello. That, that, is that, I mean, to me that's a sign. That's a sign of some horrible waste, tremendous waste, to consider that anybody would do something like that. And that's exactly what was predicted 1,400 years ago. And keep in mind, up until 60 years ago, those people were barefoot goat herders. And I'm not exaggerating, we have a better with us from Egypt. He will tell you, that when he was a little boy, he can remember his grandfather talking about he used to send all their charity over to Saudi Arabia because if they didn't, they would have started with that. Am I right or wrong? How many years did Egypt support Saudi Arabia? A thousand years, something like that? Well, I think at least 15, 20 for 